I believe we left off on around page one thirty. Uh, excuse me, three thirty, in the chapter "A Very Frosty Christmas." I don't know, about six, seven pages in. <clears throat> Harry's at the Weasleys for Christmas, and he's talking with Mr. Weasley and others. And he's talking about Draco and the conversation he overheard eavesdropped on between Draco and Snape, where he heard Draco and Snape talk about the task that Draco has to do and Harry reveals, obviously, that he doesn't trust Snape. <clears throat> so Arthur asks him, after the, the little two lines of a song that's playing over the, uh, essentially the radio, Mr. Weasley asks, has it occurred to you, Harry, that Snape was simply pretending? Harry, Pretend to offer help so that he could find out what Malfoy's up to? Yeah, I thought you'd say that. Why? Because that seems to be the thing that everyone says to Harry once he, they tell him what he believes. Plus, that's what they've been saying for years, too. What do you mean? That's what everybody tells Harry. So, Harry believes... Everyone seems to always tell Harry, well, maybe Snape's on our side. He's just making it seem like... Okay, okay, it. okay. I see what you mean now. Because in, in context of the pretending, that's where I was unsure. Okay, I get what you mean now. Um, why else does Harry think that? I mean, I think you're probably right. Is there another reason why Harry says that? Why? I mean, you're right. I mean, there's just this long-standing grudge that goes back to a generation. I mean, from the first time Harry set foot in the castle, it was disdain almost. On whose part? Harry's? All of the above. Okay, you said there was disdain almost. That's what I want to get. Dis disdain by whom for whom? Or by who, for who, towards who? I think it's Snape completely loathes James. Okay. I, True. I think that's some of it. True. Not all of it. Okay. So Snape disdains Harry or looks down on him, which is fair to say. What has Harry come to learn at the end of book one about Snape? What had Snape done all that year? He protected Harry. Even though he didn't want to, he protected Harry. Right? That's why, you know, you get to the the chapter through the trap door, and Harry's like, what? The man with two faces? I thought, of course you thought it was Snape. He plays the part, blah, blah, blah. What I'm trying to get at is Harry lacks what when it comes to Snape? An open mind. His mind is already closed to Snape. When did it when did it get closed? First lesson? <laughs> Possibly. Dumbledore's explaining Snape hates hated your father and some of that, you know. And then each successive book, even after why is Harry, in one sense at least, why is Harry Still alive? Yeah, and I'm not. I'm not talking about book seven or anything like that. Just book five. Who notified the Order of the Phoenix? Mm -hmm. Would Harry, Ron, Hermione, Neville, Ginny, Luna, still be alive? More than likely not. Okay. So. Yeah, I thought you'd say that. But how do we know? Okay. Has it occurred to you, Snape, was simply pretending? He offers what? A theory. 
a hypothesis. Scientific method says, it hasn't been practiced very often in the last few years, says you create a hypothesis and then you do what? Test. You test it. And if the hypothesis is false, you abandon it for a new hypothesis. And if the hypothesis is true, then you test it again and again and again and again and you keep refining okay here he's asking for what in this question proof proof prove it let's test the hypothesis that snape is only pretending okay how does arthur reply it isn't our business to know Remember in the scene, Padfoot's Return, the chapter of Padfoot's Return in Goblet of Fire, Harry, Ron, and Hermione meet Sirius in the cave, and they're talking, and Sirius says, you're too young, you wouldn't understand. And Ron gets upset, flustered, and says, you know, everybody keeps telling us that. Why don't you try us? Okay? Right? What's Ron really saying? What is Sirius saying? What was Arthur implying to Harry, you know, in book three about Sirius when they thought Sirius was still evil? You're too young to know. So we're going to keep you kind of like Aragorn and the Riders of the North, keep the hobbits simple and ignorant, okay? Right? Are there some things children should not know about? Yes. I shouldn't even ask that question because our world has gone so blanking crazy. Yes, five-year-olds should not not be taught, my opinion, I could, you may disagree, and you're wrong. <laughs> uh, should not be taught certain things in school. Atomic physics? No, notice what I did there. I didn't go to the thing that was immediately on your mind because of our culture. They, they can't learn quantum physics, okay? Harry wants to know the real truth, the unadulterated truth. He's saying, I'm old enough, right? Look what he did the previous year. It isn't our business to know, said Lupin. Sorry, Lupin. I knew that was Lupin. Not Arthur. Notice what Lupin, what Lupin does there. He doesn't say, Harry, it's not your business to know. It's our. our. In other words, Harry, we're in the same boat you are. He had turned his back on the fire now and faced Harry across Mr. Weasley. So he'd been facing the fire. He hears Harry, he hears Harry ask Arthur Weasley the question, and notice, Lupin's engaged. That is, he finds something interesting in this conversation, and he turns around and takes part in it. And he delivers what I kind of think is the the meat of the remaining of this book. And the central problem Harry has all of the next book. It's Dumbledore's business. What's the it? Snape's true Whether or not we believe Snape. That's Dumbledore's business. Dumbledore trusts Severus. And that ought to be good enough for all of us. Okay? Here, it, it's, it's almost like a logical syllogism. Snape is acting on behalf of the order. That's kind of an assertion or premise. Dumbledore trusts Snape. Second premise. Therefore, or Dumbledore, Snape's working for Dumbledore. Dumbledore tr trusts Snape. Therefore, we should trust Snape, kind of thing. 
I'm not saying it's an accurate syllogism, all right? So, Dumbledore trusts Severus in that ought to be good enough for all of us. Why? Dumbledore is a fairly decent judge of character, but notice what Harry's very next question is, or very next statement is. But just say, just say Dumbledore is wrong about Snape. What's that do to the, to the syllogism? If Dumbledore is wrong about Snape, then we're all wrong for believing. Snape, or another way of putting that, we're all wrong for believing Dumbledore. See this question? How do we know? It's going to go from here to being about Snape to book seven. Nearly the entirety of the book. In fact, it's all the way until... Battle for Hogwarts. It's only at the end of Harry, Ron, and Hermione's conversation with Aberforth, Dumbledore, that this problem for Harry is resolved. Resolved, not solved. That is, Harry doesn't ever come to this knowledge, knowing, all right? What's he come to? People have said it many times. It comes down to whether or not you trust Dumbledore's judgment. I do. Therefore, I trust Severus. What is another word for trust? What are two more words for trust? If you trust someone, you what? Depend. Depend. Depend on them, possibly. What else? Believe. You believe. And you have faith in them. Everyone, not everyone, Cornelius Fudge. Because I think he probably still holds it a little bit against Dumbledore. All the members of the Order of the Phoenix have total faith in Dumbledore, right? Every last one of them. Until, I mean, we're finishing this book today, so we're going to jump to the end of it. Until what? He does. No. I mean, yes, but I want you to be more active. Snape kills him. Until Snape kills him. Mm -hmm. See, he doesn't just die. <laughs> Snape kills him. We see it with our own two eyes. Harry sees it. Not in the film. Because where's Harry in the film version? I do remember this part. He's underneath the platform on the lightning struck tower. T totally idiotic. You know, Snape comes up and sees Harry and goes, like that's going to keep Harry quiet. Okay. Notice how quickly after Dumbledore's death, when Harry's talking with everybody else, okay, orders of the Order of the Phoenix, essentially, notice how quickly they all, every last one of them, loses trust or faith in Dumbledore. They all assume what? Dumbledore is, Dumbledore is wrong. Why? Because Harry saw it with his own two eyes. We have a phrase, right? Seeing? Is it anymore? With these things? No. Because sometimes we see things that what? aren't what they appear to be. That is, we catch an impression of something, but it's not the full 
story, right? Kind of like what have we been talking about through Lord of the Rings and through almost every one of these. Eavesdropping. When you don't get the full story, okay? So, spent too much time on that. Harry, but Dumbledore can make mistakes. What did Dumbledore tell Harry their very first lesson here? When Harry says, but you think you're right, right? And he says, well, of course. And he says, and being a rather, or being cleverer than most people when I'm wrong. His mistakes are corresponding when you catastrophic. The results are. See, I think this is why Harry's thinking this. He's, he's had that experience with Dumbledore that maybe the others haven't heard Dumbledore be that humble. Okay. And they've got a longer, what? Longer experiences with Dumbledore, seeing Dumbledore in action. Of, of all the members of the Order of Phoenix, who's probably, maybe with one exception, who's probably known Dumbledore the longest? I'd say either Moody or McGonagall. Because mm -hmm. McGonagall's been a professor there, I think it comes out somewhere, 49 years. Is it? I thought it was 37. But I Is it 30? I thought it was 49 in her little talk with Umbridge. Her evaluation, maybe it's 37. It's a long time, though. Okay? So... He looks Lupin straight in the eye. Do you honestly like Snape? See, and that's the flaw in Harry's argument. Harry equates liking with trusting. Harry equates being likable with being trustworthy. Is Snape likable? In any depiction we see of him, I'm going to qualify that in just a second. In any depiction we see of him until Harry sees Snape's memory in book seven. Is, is Snape ever likable up until that point? Yes, Leah. Uh, 39 years. 39 years, okay. Um, does he ever do anything that comes across nice? No, he doesn't. But it's only in that one memory that we kind of get the, the full sleep. All right? Where we do see him likable. He's 11 years old. In a little bit later, okay? Lupin, I neither like nor dislike Severus. That is, I'm totally apathetic. <laughs> I have I have no feeling whatsoever. Okay? So Lupin says, bottom of that next page, and then we're gonna go on. You are determined to hate him, Harry, and I understand. With James as your father, Sirius as your godfather, you have inherited an old prejudice. Notice he's, it's almost like he's saying that prejudice can be passed on genetically. <clears throat> By all means, tell Dumbledore, tell Dumbledore what you've told Arthur and me, but don't expect him to share your view of the matter. Do not even expect him to be surprised by what you might by what you tell him. It might have been on Dumbledore's orders that Severus questioned Draco. In other words, what's he telling Harry? Something Harry's heard before. It might be that Dumbledore is doing some things that you aren't aware of. Okay? Same thing as brother, Dumbledore's brother is going to tell Harry in book seven. Okay. So, 
Let's go on a little bit. Um, Scrimger shows up. Okay. This is... Don't tell me. I don't have a page number written here. I don't have a page number written. Um, one, two. Somewhere around three... 43, 342, 344 maybe. So here we meet Scrimger outside. They talk. Scrimger says, all these whispers of a prophecy, of you being the chosen one. Here, just stay silent. Let's him. I assume Dumbledore has discussed these? Yeah. And what does he say? Uh, it's none of your business. It's between us. Okay. But I, I don't want you to tell me. I mean, obviously, it, secrets between you. But, you know, does it really matter whether you're the chosen one? Harry, I, I don't know what you mean, Minister. Notice how if it were book one or two or maybe even three, I would say this is just Harry's stupidity, right? This is Harry playing stupid. Well, of course, to you it will matter enormously. But to the wizarding community at large, it's what? It's all perception. In other words, it's all what they believe. And we're back to this again. It's all what they see, because he's going to talk about what does he want Harry to do? How post boy? What did you say about the ministry? I said work kind of for him, kind of be on their side. So it's how? minister wants Harry to like see him, like the wizards to like see him going in and out of the ministry. Bingo. They want, he wants the daily prophet to be positioned to be able to take pictures of Harry going in and out of the ministry. Why? It makes it look like Harry is with the ministry. It makes it look like Harry is working for the ministry. Again, it's all perception. It's all belief. Would Harry be, quote unquote, working for the ministry? No, he wouldn't. He doesn't say, you know, Harry, I'll put you on the payroll. It's just, Harry said nothing. He thought he saw dimly where they were heading. People believe you are the chosen one, he says. They think you're quite the hero, well, which of course you are, you know. Chosen or not, how many times have you faced he who must not be named? Notice, Scrimger doesn't say the name. Why not? Harry does, Lupin does, Sirius did, Ron and Hermione even now do sometimes, Dumbledore does, McGonagall doesn't, <laughs> Scrimger doesn't, huh? He says, well, the point is, Harry, you're a symbol of hope for many. Where have we heard that already? Dobby, Dobby book two. You're a symbol of hope. The idea that there's somebody out there who might be able, who might even be destined to destroy whom, who, he who must not be named. Well, I mean, it gives people a lift. What's that mean? It gives them a lift. It makes them feel better. It makes them think their government is protecting them. Mm -hmm. When what is the government really doing? Well, manipulating, them. manipulating them or nothing. I can't help but feel once you realize this, you might consider it, you know? You might feel like you have a duty to stand alongside the ministry. He doesn't use the old well-worn metaphor 
to stand shoulder to shoulder. He doesn't say that, but he says to stand alongside. It's the same idea. Harry, well, golly gee, Mr. Minister, I don't really understand what you mean. He's going to make him spell it out. It's almost like Harry's got a recording device, and he wants to get the minister to baldly lie. Okay? I don't mean lie to Harry. I mean so that Harry gets him saying, we want you to pretend to be working for the ministry so that witches and wizards everywhere think you are, even though they will be being lied to, or they are being lied to, etc. Okay? So, Harry says, so you want me to give the impression I'm working for the ministry? Boy, make everybody feel good. The chosen one. Why does Rowling use that phrase? What's another word for that phrase? Single word. You're going to start seeing the phrase the Messiah come up every now and then. Not in here, in our society. Why? Because symphonies and orchestras and choral groups are going to be putting on the Messiah between now and December 25th. Anointed. It's the exact same. What did we didn't talk about it in class because I was sick. What did Lucius Malfoy call Harry after Harry's hearing in book five? Harry comes out of the Wisengamot. He meets Arthur Weasley. They see Lucius Malfoy. And Lucius says, you know, it's, it's odd how you kind of got out of that, you know, snake-like. And then he says, well, well, well. Something Potter. Patronus Potter. He calls Harry a Patronus. What's it mean? Protector, defender, guardian, savior. <laughs> and to jump to the very end, who has not read Book 7? Anybody? You haven't? Okay, I won't say it then. Jump to the very end of book seven, for those of you who have had. Harry is a Patronus, both figuratively, metaphorically, and literally. Okay? So, Harry, I don't want to be used. It's his ultimate response. I mean, he says, yeah, I don't think that'll work. Because if I go in and out, people will think I am, gonna, I am working for the ministry, and that's a lie, right? I mean, Harry doesn't say that's a lie, but he does say, I don't want to be used. Some would say it's your duty to be used by the ministry. I mean, who are you in the grand scheme of things compared to the ministry? You know, Harry, others would say it's your duty to check people who really are death eaters before you chuck them in prison. And Harry mentions Stan Shunpike. Poor Stan Shunpike. We get introduced to him in book three. Okay, He's mentioned in book five. He's mentioned in this book. He's going to be mentioned in book seven. Okay, You never get it right, you people. Do you? Notice what Harry has just done. What's he mean by you people? Minister of Magic, what else? Power you power hungry people? He's making a division between me and my people and you and your people. Who's the me and my people? Harry, Ron, Hermione, obviously. Order Neville, Jenny, Luna, the DA, the Order, Dumbledore, as opposed to the, the Ministry and Voldemort? Or the Minimort? Or the Voldestry? All those out there? 
who in one sense, how different are they? How different is Fudge from Voldemort? I mean, Voldemort has abilities Fudge doesn't have. But Fudge wanted what more than anything else? He wanted to keep his power. He wanted to remain in power. Is that true? From what we know, this book and book seven, is that true about Rufus Grimger? Think about it before you answer. What happens to Scrimger? He gets, like in seven, Go ahead and say it. He gets imperious in his body. Nope. What? Scrimger doesn't. Scrimger doesn't get imperious. Pius Thickness, oh. who's the next minister of magic. Notice the name. How? I don't remember that part. <laughs> when they make their move on the ministry. Hmm. In other words, he dies defending the ministry and ergo what the ministry represents or should represent the good. He dies well, in other words. All right? So, he and Harry go back and forth. So you're not the chosen one. Thought you said it didn't matter. <laughs> Notice, Harry's being very perceptive here. He is seeing through what the minister is saying. He does see whether or not Harry is the chosen one is important. Okay? Shouldn't have said that. Scrimger says. Harry says, no, it was honest. It was one of the only honest things you've said. Okay? What's Dumbledore up to? Where does he go? Uh, excuse me, let me back up. After Harry says it was honest, you know, you don't care whether I live or die. You do care that I help you convince everyone you're winning the war against Voldemort. I haven't forgotten, Minister, and he does is this. And he shows him, I must not tell lies. And he says, I don't remember you rushing to my defense when I was trying to tell everyone Voldemort was back. The ministry wasn't so keen to be pals last year. Okay? So, Scrimger says, I'll use other means to try to figure out what Dumbledore's doing. Harry, you can try. You seem cleverer than Fudge. That's not saying a lot. So I'd have thought you'd have learned from his mistakes. He tried interfering at Hogwarts. You might have noticed he's not minister anymore, right? What, what happened when Fudge told Dumbledore, we're going to take you in? Dumbledore put up a fight. Yeah, Dumbledore kind of laughed and said, you know, I'm not going to, what's the phrase, go quietly? And he, you know, does a little, and they're all knocked out. Scrimger. It's clear to me he, Dumbledore, has done a very good job on you. Dumbledore's man through and through, aren't you, Potter? Harry, yeah, I am. Until we get to book seven. Actually, the end of book six, when Harry's no longer going to be quite as much Dumbledore's man. Sluggish memory. Okay? Um... Harry tells Dumbledore about his meeting with uh, Scrimger and what Scrimger wanted to know and such. Um, three sixty, three sixty one. Tom Riddle comes to Hogwarts. Harry asked Dumbledore, did you tell anybody about what you suspected about him? Or did you tell anybody about how he behaved at the orphanage? Dumbledore, no, I did not. He says, though he had shown no hint of remorse, it was possible that he felt sorry for how he had behaved before. And I was resolved, excuse me, and was resolved to turn over a fresh leaf. I chose to give him that chance. In other words, what did Dumbledore not do 
to the minds of the teachers and students at Hogwarts about Tom Riddle. Keep going. I'm looking for one word. It's a word that Lupin used, which is going to give it away, to describe what Sirius and James passed on to Harry. You are determined to hate him. Why? Because of the prejudice that was instilled in you. Dumbledore doesn't want to prejudge Tom Riddle to the faculty and staff and student body. Why? That's giving somebody a chance. Harry didn't get that. Lupin says, towards Snape. Okay? So, Harry, but you didn't trust him, right? Dumbledore. He says, let's say I did not take it for granted that he was trustworthy. So if he didn't trust him, or if he didn't take it for granted that he was trustworthy, what did Dumbledore do? Kept a sharp eye on him. Okay? So, he goes on and talks about, you know, it's been difficult to get memories of Riddle, of Tom Riddle while he was at Hogwarts. But he does say, I did find some. He said I could persuade some to talk to me. Okay. And he takes Harry into a memory. What's the memory? Whose memory? Morphins. Where was Morphin when Dumbledore got the memory? In Azkaban. This isn't Morphin in Azkaban from the previous memory. This is Morphin in Azkaban from a different memory, from a different time. Okay? So they talk, they come out of the memory. Why was Morphin in prison? Tom, this time. Was it because Tom Riddle um, made him, like, his memories altered so that he was the one that killed Mr. Lee? Was that a different No, that's this. Because Tom Riddle killed his father and grandparents using. Morphin's wand and altering his memory so that he took blame for it. But Dumbledore was able to show, was able to determine it wasn't Morphin because you can see when a memory's been modified. So, Dumbledore says this is around 365 or so, 366. He says the ministry called upon him. They didn't need to question him. They didn't need to use veritaserum or legilimency. He admitted to the murder. They put him in prison. Harry, so Voldemort stole Morphin's wand and used it. That's right. We don't have any memories to prove that, but I think we can be sure. And Morphin never realized what that he hadn't done it. Dumbledore, nope. But he had this real memory in him all the time. Dumbledore, yep. Took a great deal of skilled legilimency to coax it out of him. Because Dumbledore, Dumbledore is a legilimens. Remember in book two, when Harry goes up to Dumbledore's office to meet him, and Dumbledore asks him one question. Harry, is there anything you want to tell me about? Anything at all? And Harry kind of feels like Dumbledore's reading his mind, and he says, no, nothing at all. Dumbledore knows at that point. We can assume now, okay? So, talks about extracting the memory and using it to try to get Morphin's release from Azkaban. Okay? But Morphin died before they decided. Why does Dumbledore do that? 
Why does Gandalf hope that Gollum can be cured before the end? Why does, I think it's, I think I can, I'm not going to say anything else about it, but I'm going to ask the question that Harry asks at the end of book seven to Voldemort. Why does Harry ask Voldemort, don't answer it, since not everybody's finished book seven. Why does Harry ask Voldemort to feel some contrition? <clears throat> Why does he tell him to be a man? Dumbledore suggests no one should be in prison wrongly, and especially die in prison wrongly. Who have we seen wrongly in prison? Serious? Hagrid? Twice. Stan? Attempted Dumbledore. Attempt at Dumbledore. And just on the basis of those, I think it's probably safe to assume quite a few others. Okay? So, Dumbledore says, whatever Morphin was, he did not deserve to die as he did, blamed for murders he had not committed. Okay? Um, and that's when Dumbledore explains to Harry why he got the letter in book two for the magic that Dobby had done. Harry thinks Dobby. If, so if you're underage and you do magic inside an adult witch or wizard's house, the ministry won't know. Dumbledore, they will certainly be unable to tell who performed the magic. They rely on witch and wizard with, um, parents to enforce their offspring's obedience while within their walls. Harry, well that's rubbish. Look what happened here. Look, in other words, the ministry's got that all screwed up. Why don't they figure it out? Okay. Yes. There is a discrepancy on that point, though, in the books, because in book five, when the order comes to collect Harry, they use all sorts of magic in the house, and nothing ever happens. Yep. Um. Okay. So. Dumbledore told us Harry again. You need to get that memory from Slughorn. Birthday surprises. Harry just bumps, you know, goes up to Slughorn and asks him about Horcruxes. Doesn't even try to butter him up or anything. This is on 378 or so. Okay. Slughorn says, Dumbledore showed you that memory. Get out of here, etc. We get Ron um, gets poison. We get, you know, we find out Ron's birthday is March 1st, if that's important. Um, Ron eats the chocolate cauldrons that Romilda Vane left. <sighs> Chapter 19, we're skipping the thing about Ron getting poisoned. I mean, I know it's important. Um, Elf Tales, see how many pages? 25 in. Dobby comes to Harry's defense in front of Creature. Chapter 20, Lord Voldemort's Request. I should have a clock in front of me. Big, big, big chapter. Okay. Um, Harry goes off to class with Dumbledore. Private lesson. Let's see. And tells him, I asked Slughorn, he didn't give it to me. And Dumbledore says, um, I would have hoped that you return to the task I set you. That is after Ron, you know, was poisoned and such. I thought I made it clear to you how very important that memory is. We'll be wasting our time without the memory. So come on, Harry. Now, Dumbledore says, we're going into murkier and murky, murkier and stranger territory. Okay. 
He finds out, Perry does. Voldemort, when he left school, went to work for Borgen and Burtz. This is 428 or 429. Okay. He wanted to remain at Hogwarts as a teacher, Dumbledore tells him. Harry's like, why? I believe he had several reasons. Firstly, and most, and very importantly, Voldemort was, I believe, more attached to the school than he'd ever been to a person. <coughs> Hogwarts was where he'd been happiest, the first and only place he'd felt at home. Two, Castle's stronghold of ancient magic. He thought he could plumb the depths of its magic. Okay? And, um, three, he would have great power and influence over young witches and wizards. Maybe he got that idea from Slughorn Slug Club, Dumbledore says. Harry. But he didn't get the job, right? He'd gone back, he'd asked to dip it for a job, he didn't get the job. Dumbledore says no. And I had a little bit to do with that. Okay. Um, so he went off to work for Borgen and Burks, and we see the memory of how he cons. Hepzibah Smith, out of what? Hufflepuff's cup, Slytherin's locket. Okay. Um, we find out a house elf, Hokey, had what happened to it? Or her? She was hurt. She had her memory altered well. She will remember putting something in her mistress's teeth. Poisoned. Hepzibah Smith, Pokey was blamed for it, etc. Okay. So, for 37, 438, 439, Harry, uh, Dumbledore says to Harry, Mad to you, perhaps, but not to Voldemort. I hope you'll understand in due course exactly what those objects meant to him. You must admit it's not difficult to imagine that he saw the locket, at least it's his, right? Last remaining heir of Slytherin. It's something that was Slytherin's. It should be mine. Harry, yeah, but why the cup? Ah, it had belonged to another of Hogwarts founders. Okay. So Dumbledore starting to show Harry Voldemort wants things that belong to the founders. Okay. So now he takes Harry into one of his own memories. Young Dumbledore, auburn hair, sitting behind the desk, and in comes Tom Riddle. How many years, I don't think we're told, after he leaves Hogwarts is this? We're not told exactly. It's enough for him to look different. Okay? But the looking different has nothing to do with time. Looking different has everything to do with what he's done in that time. All right? And so, how does Dumbledore address him? Good evening, Tom. Won't you sit down? Voldemort takes a seat. And they display niceties to each other. Remember in the duel in book four, Dumbledore, uh, Voldemort says Dumbledore would want you to follow the niceties to, you know, show courtesy, bow Harry, and he makes him bow, okay? Dumbledore, can I offer you a drink? That would be nice, I've come a long way. How long a way has he come? I could be stretching here. What do we know of one location that Voldemort seems to have an affinity to? Albania. Albania. Okay. He didn't just come from Borgen and Burks. I think that's pretty clear. This is a few years after that, probably. So, Dumbledore fixes, fixes him a drink. So, Tom, to what do I owe the pleasure? Man, they don't call me Tom anymore. Dumbledore, yeah, 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 I know. But to me, I'm afraid you will always be Tom Riddle. And that's where I wish Rolling had put but to me, you will always be Tommy Riddle. Now he's an adult. 
He's in his 20s. When Dumbledore first saw him, more than likely, all the Toms I've known, when they were in their prepubescent years, they were Tommy. Okay? It's one of the irritating things about old teachers, you know. So he toasts Voldemort, as though we're told. Nevertheless, Harry felt the atmosphere in the room change suddenly. Dumbledore's refusal to use Voldemort's chosen name was a refusal to allow Voldemort to dictate the terms of the meeting, and Harry could tell that Voldemort took it as such. Okay, now notwithstanding everything else I've said about Harry so far in this book, do you think that fits, that description of what's going on in Harry's mind about reading the dynamics of the meeting fits Harry's character? See, I don't think it does. I think Hermione would see that immediately. I think Ron would be total, even more clueless than Harry. But Harry kind of, you know, reads the scene perfectly. So, they talk. And Dumb, uh, Voldemort says, I think you must know that I've seen and done much since I left this place. I can show and teach your students things they can gain from no other teacher. Dumbledore, yeah, yeah, you probably could. I've heard about the things you've done. Rumors of your doings have reached your old school, Tom. I should be very sorry to believe half of them. Greatness inspires envy. Envy engenders spite. Spite spawns lies. You must know this, Dumbledore. Why should Dumbledore know that? What has Voldemort, Tom Riddle, just said about Dumbledore? Something about his childhood? No. Nope. About, notice my phrasing in the question, about Dumbledore. Not about himself. <laughs> you are great. That's why you, how's he put it? You must know this, Dumbledore. Your greatness, what? Inspires envy. Envy engenders spite. Spite spawns lies. Book five proves the truth of what Tom Riddle says here about Dumbledore. Why is Dumbledore kicked off the Wisecrack? Because Fudge is afraid. Fudge is envious. Fudge is spiteful. And now Fudge is lying. Okay? Book five. So, Dumbledore, you call it greatness, what you've been doing? Certainly. I've pushed the boundaries of magic further, perhaps, than they've ever been pushed. Of some kinds of magic. Of some. Of others you remain, forgive me, woefully ignorant. Voldemort smiles. The old argument. What does that phrase imply? Well, that's what they're going to talk about. What does just the phrase, the old argument, imply? It's on the other board. What? It's on the other board. This is not the first time they've had this conversation. Why? What has Dumbledore attempted to do in the past? How many chances does Gandalf give Saruman? He doesn't only give him a second chance. He gives him like a third and fourth chance. Fourth chance. And then Frodo doesn't want them to kill Saruman. Why? He may still find his cure. The implication, I think, could be wrong, is that they've had this conversation many times. Because what is, I almost said Gandalf, what is Dumbledore, Gandalf in another name, attempting to do? Break through? To get Tom to see with other eyes, maybe? The old argument. But nothing I have seen in the world has supported your famous pronouncements. Notice, 
This isn't something Dumbledore has kept a secret. He seems to imply Dumbledore has said this publicly, loudly before. Okay? Your famous pronouncements that love is more powerful than my kind of magic, Dumbledore. Look at Dumbledore's response. Perhaps you've been looking in the wrong places. Where has Tom been looking for what? The most powerful magic or love? And, and I don't know if Rowling has this song in mind. There's a song from the 70s, looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for, looking for love in all the wrong faces, looking for love in all the wrong places, something like that, or two lines of it, okay? You starting to say? So what does Dumbledore mean? Perhaps you've been looking in, all the, in the wrong places. Love is more powerful than my kind of magic. Dumbledore says, maybe you've been looking wrongly. Where's he been looking? Well, then what better place to start my fresh researches than here at Hogwarts? Will you let me return? Will you let me share my knowledge? I place myself and my talents at your disposal. I am yours to command. Use me. Does Dumbledore want command? No. Did Gandalf want control, power over anyone? No. Did Dumbledore at one time, don't, don't say anything about book seven, just a nod or a yes or no, it's fine. Did Dumbledore at one time want command, control, power? Yes, he did. And that's why he is the way he is now, okay? So let's get back to that other question, which we don't have time for because we've only got less than 30 minutes to finish. If Voldemort's been looking in the wrong places, Two questions. Where has he been looking and where has he not looked? To prove or disprove that love, how's he put it, is more powerful than the dark arts, because that's what my kind of magic I think refers to. How would you prove or disprove that hypothesis? Okay. For kind of a basic entry level. Possibly. Go to the Ministry of Magic, Department of Mysteries. There's a room there. Always locked. <laughs> so I'm not quite sure how you can get in, but there's a room there that is all love. Okay. Is that where love is stored, where love is kept? No. How do you prove, test, try, love? Show. You're going to have to understand it first. Okay. Notice what the word, it's a metaphor. The word understand is itself a metaphor. Because what does it mean? To understand is to stand under, to support Something like Atlas with the earth on his shoulders. Old Greek mythology. Okay? To, to understand an idea means, you know, first you have to hold it up. To do what? To look at it. To perceive it. To attempt to look into it. But how do you do that with love? Right? Can love be put on a scale? What can love do? Notice the question presumes, partially at least, the answer. Do is what kind of verb? Action. It's an action verb. 
Love is always an action. And we've seen it in Harry, right? From the first book on. What's the first instance where we see it in Harry? In Madame Malkin's robe shop, when Malfoy disses Hagrid. And Harry defends Hagrid. And then on the train, when Malfoy disses Ron, and Harry defends Ron. And then in flying lessons, when Malfoy disses Neville, and Harry defends Neville. Forbidden Forest, he stops straight on and on and on and on. Harry does something. Right? And in the instances when Harry's actions aren't turned outwardly, but they're turned inwardly, like when he wants to go down and talk to Hagrid in book three, after he has learned what about Sirius Black? Godfather betrayed his parents, is responsible for their deaths. Yeah, let's go down and talk to Hagrid. Notice the action he wants to do there isn't love, it's both barrels. Okay? And what happens? He sees Hagrid in tears and Buckbeak's going to die. And that anger and hatred that is where? Inside. Gets turned outwardly and now it's become something else. Now he wants to help Hagrid. Okay? In the next book, Harry's going to read something about Dumbledore. And that something that he reads is going to do something to Harry's heart and mind. At first, it's going to be described as something nesting in his mind and then kind of dirtying it. Because look inside a bird's nest. What lines the bottom of the bird's nest? Droppings from the baby birds and such, okay? And that's going to have an effect on his heart. And we're going to be told at one part, at one point, that the flame of ardor, A-R-D-O-R, which means hot love, not erotic, romantic, okay? Passion is going to be chilled. It's going to die in Harry. Okay? Why? Because at that point, Harry's wrestling with this and the word I had here, trust or belief. So go back to the other question. Where has Voldemort looked, researched, whether love or his kind of magic is more powerful? Has he ever attempted love? No. Dumbledore told Harry already, first lesson. Excuse me. Second lesson it might have been. Um, just before or after the orphanage. He said Voldemort has never had friends, and I don't think he's ever wanted any. What is one of the reasons for that? Louder? The love of your okay. Um, I'm not getting at the, you know, being vulnerable, that kind of thing. What is one of the reasons he's never wanted any friends other than, you know, that makes yourself vulnerable? Has he ever needed any? Mm -hmm. He's gotten by on his own, right? I mean, other than being taken care of by Mrs. Cole. Okay, and I'll just pause and think about that for a moment. How has, dumb, how has Voldemort tried to examine love? Tried to research love. When he says, 
Nothing I've seen in the world has supported your famous pronouncements that love is more powerful than my kind of magic. What is he really saying? Cue the Tina Turner. Show me what love's got to do with it. Another way of putting that is show me love in the world. Kind of like we don't have one in here. We used to. Imagine there's a big TV screen here. Turn on the news. Show me the love in the world. Because what are you going to see images of? War. Three University of Virginia students shot overnight on Sunday. Four University of Idaho students found dead in a house the same morning. Monday morning, cops don't know why. Odd, seven students on within a single 24. That's not happened in the United States before, other than a mass shooting like at Virginia Tech back in 2007 or so. Um, war, Ukraine, okay? Reporter being man, a woman reporter being manhandled in China by the Chinese authorities because she dared to ask a human rights question to Biden and Xi, okay? Biden kind of chuckled it off, and Xi had his goons rough her up. What other kinds of stuff? Pretty much all the ugliness of the world. Show me. Because what often seems to happen, Billy Joel, the good die young, and the bad thrive, okay? So why does Dumbledore, what does Dumbledore mean? Perhaps you've been looking in the wrong places. Has Tom Riddle ever experienced love? Mm-hmm. Think about it first. I don't mean warm fuzzies. I don't mean sentimentality. Has anyone ever shown Tom Riddle love? Wes is nodding his head, yes. Dumbledore, anybody before that? Maybe his mom. Maybe his mom? How? Because, I mean, she chose to bring him into the world. She, she didn't abort him. Yeah. How else? She didn't have him on the street. Louder? She gave him to the orphanage. And what did Mrs. Cole not do? Notice I didn't ask what did she do. I asked what did she not do? She didn't kick him out. Who paid for Tom Riddle to be raised by the orphanage? The city? The state? Is that an act of love? Her caring for him? Is her raising of Tom Riddle any different, really, than the Dursley's raising of Harry? Do you think Harry got birthday presents? No, he didn't. Did he get Christmas presents? No, he didn't. Did Tom? No, he didn't. Did Harry get to go on, quote-unquote, vacations? No, he didn't, we've been told. Tom Riddle did. They would take the kids to the coast like once a year. Is that the kind of love that Dumbledore is talking about? I kind of think it is. Again, is it the warm fuzzies? Is it the cuddling, holding them next to her, sitting in a rocking chair by a fire? I kind of probably reading into it. As a baby, she probably did hold him and rock him. When he got older, he didn't want that. (laughs) Okay? So, Dumbledore goes on with the inquiry. Why are you really here? Notice, he knows he doesn't want to teach. 
Is he practicing legilimency on Tom Riddle? Probably not. Why? By this point, Tom Riddle's probably an accomplished Octomans. Probably. Okay? Why not try an open request for once? That is, why not be honest? Okay? By the way, that question is almost identical to the question Harry is going to ask Tom Riddle at the end of book seven. Only it's not going to be an honest request. He says, why not try for some remorse? Voldemort sneered. If you don't want to give me a job, of course I don't. I'd be a damn fool to offer you a job. You're a psychopath. That's your final word? It is. Then we have nothing more to say. In other words, battle lines are drawn. Dumbledore. Time is long gone when I could frighten you with a burning wardrobe and force you to make repayment for your crimes. <sighs> but I wish I could, Tom. Theoretical question. Do you think Dumbledore could? If he wanted to. You, who do you think is the more powerful wizard? I mean, book five makes it pretty clear. Dumbledore still got him in spades. I mean, there's no way, okay? So what does he mean? I wish I could, Tom. I wish I could. Why can't he? Here's an option. Because love says you can't. Love means, part of love means what? Not denying another's free will. I mean, when you take, you put somebody on a period's curse, what are you doing? You're taking away their free will. You're taking away their free will. Why are these unforgivable curses? What do you do when you take away someone's free will? You take away their soul. Okay. Notice each of these three curses are anti-human <laughs> or inhuman. Crucio. What's the root? Cruce. Crux. Crucify. It's like crucifying someone. Okay. For a second, Harry was on the verge of shouting because he thought, you know, Voldemort's about to pull a wand. Harry, why did he come back? What do you want? Get the memory, Harry. So now he's whetted Harry's appetite. All right? The unknowable room. Uh, Draco's doing something in a room, and Harry wants to find out what it is, but he can't find out what it is. Why? Because the, it's the room of requirement, and the room is what you require, not what somebody else requires. So Harry goes by it, and he says, I want to know the room that Draco needs for it, whatever, and it doesn't become what he wants it to become. 22, after the burial. Whose burial? Aragog. How does Harry get the memory? Louder? He, lose, he, he uses the Felix Felicis. How else? He gets Slughorn drunk. Gets Slughorn drunk? How else? What does he play on? His love and appreciation for Harry's mother. He pulls those heartstrings. In other words, Harry is not averse to a little guilt manipulation. I mean, there's a greater good, right? Yes, I'm using that term intentionally. There's a greater goal. And he gets the memory. Runs up to Dumbledore's office. Chapter 23. And we can finally start talking about them. Horcruxes. Okay. So. We see the memory. 
We see Slughorn explain what the Horcrux is, an object in which a person has concealed part of their soul around page 496 or so. Uh, how do you do that? And notice Tom Riddle walks Slughorn through it. On the premise of what? Well, this is, this is research for class. Like, I'm writing a paper. So tell me everything you know about how to create a nuclear bomb, you know. It's the supreme act of evil. That's how you do it. What's the supreme act of evil? Murder. Murder. Huh. Why is that the supreme act of murder, uh, the supreme act of evil? It's all three unforgivable curses bound in one. Because obviously, what does a vada cadaver do? Kills you. And because it kills you, it takes away your free will. You no longer have a choice. It does remove pain, however. But it's painful also, right? How does everybody who dies from a vada cadaver look? Every instance we've seen, terror on their face, and they're always spread eagle for some reason. It's like a shock. It makes them, you know, do this. Okay. Well, how do you how do you do that? How do you do the murder and put a bit of yourself into the Horcrux thing? I, I don't know about that. He says. Okay. So, Dumbledore and Harry come out of the memory, and. Harry says, so you think he succeeded? He made a horcrux. Dumbledore, eh, a bit more than... And he finishes that paragraph a bit more, a bit or more, with, as far as I know, as far I am sure as Voldemort knew, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two. Okay, think about what that literally means. No wizard, therefore, had ever done what? No, not necessarily. He's not talking about... I don't think he's necessarily talking about creating two horcruxes. Mm -hmm. How do you split your, toll, your soul in... How do you put it? Had ever done more than tear his soul in two. How do you tear your soul in two? You kill somebody. Mm -hmm. He says... Other than Grindelwald, no wizard's ever done more than that. Again, how do you tear your soul in two? Boom, you're dead. My soul's now in two pieces. Not necessarily two equal pieces, but two pieces. Boom, you're dead. My soul has now split again. No wizard had ever committed a double murder. See, that's what's unclear in this passage. Isn't there, like, do you have to have the intent to create a horcrux? That's what's unclear. Mm -hmm. He just talks about... As far as I know, as far I am sure as Voldemort knew, no wizard had ever done more than tear his soul in two. No wizard had ever committed more than one murder is what he seems to be implying. Okay. Who's that wizard, by the way? Who done who done more than that? That's kind of what I'm wondering based on book seven. Okay. Anyways, they keep talking, so they start talking about horcruxes. And what does Dumbledore get Harry to think? Or make Harry realize. Why was Voldemort after relics? Slytherin's locket. Hufflepuff's cup. Meaningful items. Me He's using these to turn into horcruxes. Okay? So, round page. Why do I not have the page number written down? 
496, somewhere around 5,000 or so. Dumbledore points out the diary was a horcrux. What happened when Harry stabbed the diary with the basilisk fang? No, oh, you wicked child, I'm milky. You know, he goes all wicked, wicked witch of the east on him. Or west, whatever it is. Okay, so when Voldemort told Harry back in book four that I, who have gone further than anybody along the path that leads to immortality, what does that mean? He was referring to his horcruxes, Dumbledore says. Horcruxes in the plural. Harry, okay, so he's made himself impossible to kill by murdering other people. Cool. Dumbledore starts to explain more about the horcruxes, and Harry says, wait, wait, wait. You think he made seven horcruxes? Why seven? It's, lucky, it's, number. it's a lucky number. It's a magical number, okay? He made seven. They could be anywhere. They could be invisible. Dumbledore, glad you understand how difficult the problem is. But no, Harry, not seven, six. Six horcruxes. Because what are the horcruxes? One, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the seventh? Still in Voldemort. Okay. He made six horcruxes. He divided his soul into seven pieces. One of them has still got to be in the body. Otherwise, there wouldn't be anything there. Otherwise, you have what the thing was that Peter Pettigrew carried in the swaddling clothes that he dumped into the cauldron. Okay? And you have the thing you see in the chapter King's Cross in Book 7. Okay? So they start to talk about him. He says, Harry, you've destroyed one. So knock one down. And I destroyed another. Harry goes, ooh, the ring. Got it. Great, good, good. What else? So there's four more. All right. So what does Dumbledore finally get to tell Harry? I mean, they go on, they talk about them all. The locket, Hufflepuff's cup, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Dumbledore says at the end of that paragraph, again, 502. 503. I'm confident, however, that the only known relic of Gryffindor remains safe. But there's two. Where are they? In his office. In his office. Okay. All right. And he tells Harry, next page, I'm sure he was intending to make his final horcrux with your death. but he failed, okay? So they keep talking. Harry, does he know when a horcrux is destroyed? Dumbledore, not sure, more than likely, okay, or possibly, okay? We're getting to one, two, three, four, five, five or six pages before the end of the chapter. So Harry now brings it back to the prophecy. So if all those horcruxes are destroyed, Voldemort could be killed. Dumbledore. Yep, I think so. Never forget, though, that while his soul may be damaged beyond repair, his brain and his magical power remain intact. It will take uncommon skill and power to kill a wizard like Voldemort. Harry, channeling his inner Frodo. But I haven't got uncommon skill and power. I don't have... Wit, heart, and strength. Dumbledore, you do have a power. Love, again, in other words, the old argument. That's it? I can love? Yes, Harry, you can love. Harry's, like, Harry's thinking, so all I gotta do is go up to Voldemort and go, Tom, I love you. <laughs> now be converted. So when the prophecy says I'll have the power, the Dark Lord knows not, it just means love, 
Yes, just love. All right, you're putting everything up. So, even though we didn't finish, um, Thursday, if you haven't started Deathly Hallows, read it. <laughs> but we'll finish with this. We're All we're really going to do is finish this chapter, which is going to take probably 15, 20 minutes for just those last four pages. Um, we'll talk briefly about Sectum Sempra. We won't. Briefly about the seer overheard. Um, lightning struck tower, the cave. Won't say much about the Phoenix Lament or the White Tomb. Probably take half hour, 45 minutes, and then jump big time into Deathly Hallows. All right. Today is Tuesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm